So you finally got your flooring installed and now it's time to install the quarter round. We'll put that caulk gun away because today we're going to be going over a couple tips and tricks to help you get those miters real nice and tight. And some tips on what we use to putty our holes after nailing. You're not going to want to miss these, so stick around. That's coming up next. Hi guys, welcome back to UFloor, the channel dedicated to bringing the average DIYer the latest tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. And today we're going to be going over cutting quarter round. Now I figured the best way to do this is to do kind of on the job to show you how it goes from start to finish and how it is that I go about running my quarter round. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I did a job where we did some Pergo Outlast and we ran the quarter round on there and I took a lot of great videos so you could see actually on the job how to cut inside corners and outside corners. Now before we get started, I did want to go over something with you. These are a couple pieces that I've already cut on my saw right here and for reference points so you know what I'm talking about when I'm discussing it in the video. This right here is what I would call an outside corner. When I write it down on my paper, I'm probably going to write SH for short point because as you can see, there's an angle on it and the long point down here, that's what I would call the long and this is what I would call the short. Now over here on this other end, I would call this the long and I would call that the short. Does that make sense? If you get a little bit confused or you're working with somebody else who does it a different way, they may call this inside corner and they may call this the outside corner. So basically what happens is when you put it together on an outside wall, that's what it's supposed to look like when the miter comes together, real nice and clean. If you're going on an inside corner, these are what you're going to, these are what you're going to be using for your inside corner. So I don't want to waste any time. We're going to jump right into the job site so you can see how we get this thing started from start to finish. So let's go. Now the guy who taught me how to cut and install trim, shout out to Toby Tyler, told me when you walk through the door, the first piece of trim to your left will be number one. Then you want to measure from left to right, just like you were reading a book. That way, if one person is measuring and nailing and one person is cutting, the cutter will always know which end is which on the cut sheet. He or she would just read it like a book. In this case, the measurement is 92 from square to short. Now this quarter round is only 94 inches long, so I like to get the most out of it, then add the small piece at the end. So a lot of cuts are 92 from long to short or 92 from short to long. You'll notice that I'm skipping the small piece temporarily and making a mark from the right wall to the left at 92 inches. Then I can measure the next one in line, which is the small piece. I do this because I always want the bevel on my splices to face away from the eye view. That way, it's almost flawless when viewing it from the main area of the room. This next piece will be from long to return. The door trim sticks out past the baseboard in most cases, so the piece at the end, what I would call the return, has to have a finished look. We usually just cut it square and then turn it on a 45 and cut it about an eighth of an inch down. So obviously with two doors, this number would be from return to return. So that pretty much explains how we measure the quarter round. I'll just go ahead and talk you through the next one. That one was a return to a long. This next one is going to be long to long or inside to inside corner. Next is long to short or inside corner to outside corner. Next we would say short to long or outside to inside. Remember, we read this like a book and long to long. You guys get the point. All right, so we're out here to cut some quarter round and I want to show you guys that this is the quarter round that they send out at Home Depot. Basically, it's it's really pressed cardboard that's being glued together, I guess pressurized, you can see. It forms a stick and then it has paper wrapped around it. I don't know what that paper is made out of, but it, paper's paper, so if it gets wet and this is cardboard, it's not a good scene. So uh, if, you have, or if you're in a place that is very much a lot of water, uh, you should use real wood or you can buy PVC if you're in a high water area if that's something you want to do, which is the man-made product. Anyway, we're using this today and I'm going to show you how uh, you cut it. One thing I do want to say about this, if you, when they send these out, and this is the way me and my wife do it, they send it with a label on it, right? So if you're standing it up against the wall like that, if you put the label to the left when you're cutting it, 
then it comes out a little bit farther. So it acts more like a quarter round, all right? But if you put the label to the right, it, it actually, the three quarter goes up and this is more around five eighths. So it's more like a shoe mold this way. So it's really whatever you prefer. We, with the laminate, with our quarter inch expansion gap, we like to use it with the label to the left. And if we put the label on the left at the, within the saw, we'll always know that every time we have the two piece of miter that comes together, that they'll always line up. You don't want one that's standing up tall and one that's laying down flat. You want to be able to join them together. So make sure you're putting your quarter round in the saw facing the same way every time you do it. And if you're using real wood three quarter, it's three quarters by three quarters. So it doesn't matter. You can cut it in however you want. All right, so we're going to start with our list here. 92, this one's pretty simple. It's square, it went right up in that corner there. So. And because this stuff dents so easily, because it's cardboard, sometimes I don't even use a pencil. I just come up here and mark it with my thumbnail. I'm gonna set this on a 44 for a reason, and I'll explain in a minute, but I want all my miters to be consistent. Then I just number them according to where they are on my list. That would be number one. Next one is 28 and a 16. And again, it's on a 44 degrees. Now I'm going to mark 28 and 16 to my inside corner, that first inside corner. And again, I'm just going to use my fingernail because it makes it a little tiny mark. We're going to cut back, but we're also going to spin it to 44 degrees. I'm going to just blow through these next cuts so we can get to installing. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you guys like videos like these, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more videos like this. And you'll also get to watch how I grow as a YouTuber, like my filming and editing skills. Do they improve or do they get worse? These things take a lot of work and they are very cheap. All I ask is for the donation of one like. On this next one we have 31 and 5 eighths to the short. We haven't had short on our list anymore. And this is one of those I would tell you you could either consider to be an outside corner. I like to write short, that's just how I've been doing it. And if you would write the I for an inside corner or long because it makes a, in my opinion, it makes a long on the outside. Whatever faces the wall, that's long. But if it faces the wall and comes out, I call that short. Here's an example, long, short. But you would never do that. You say short to long. Why? We're reading it like a book, left to right. <clears throat> All right. On this one, we're going to go long to short, but we're still going to make our long point that goes on the inside corner of 44 degrees. But the one that goes to the outside corner, we're going to make that one of 46 degrees. Once we get these pieces in there, I'll show you what I'm talking about and why I do that. So stick with me. This one's 44. <laughs> Hey guys, all right, we're back in the closet. And before we get started placing all the cord around where it goes, I wanted to show you why I cut my miters in the inside corners on a 44 and why I cut my outside on a 46. All right, so I went ahead and cut two pieces that are really short, so I can use them for the inside and the outside, just to mock up to show you what it would look like if I actually took these out to the saw and cut them on a 45 degrees to try to make my miter. Now on the inside corner, as you can see, when I slide them in, When I go to push those in, it's not very tight. I have a very visible black line right there. And a lot of times that line will uh, be out towards the front and see how it's tight in the back. Well, what if we could make it tight in the front and if there's any gap at all, it would be towards the back. So that's why we cut them on a 44 degrees. Now on the outside corners, it's the same situation. Let me explain what's happening. When they drywall the wall here, they have put a little piece of metal in here and in order to, you can even see the little dots right here where the 
holes are where you put screws in, and they put the drywall mud over top of it. In order to make that where it's flawless and seamless, they kind of got to pack the mud out, which makes the wall kind of curve out a little bit. So when you're putting your baseboard on there, it turns that 90 degrees into just a little bit more out there. So that's why we cut these on a 46. This is what it looks like with a 45. I'm getting right here at the short point, put them together. Right there. As you can see, there's a, there's a crack out the front. Now, wouldn't that be nice if it was tied out front and there was a crack in the back? So, that's why we cut these on a 46 degrees for the outside. As you can see, when we put them together, it is literally tight on the outside. Right? Outside. And then once I roll them in, it's hard to see because my hand's in the way. Let me get my hand out of the way. But you can see it is very tight. And a lot of times if there is any slight gap right there, if you just push it into the into the baseboard and put your nails in, it'll hold and you don't even need putty or caulk right there. It is it is beautiful. But you can if you want to. Just uh, And as far as the inside corner goes, if you cut them on a 44 degrees, it's the same thing. They've packed this wall out so much with the drywall that it's not a 90 degrees anymore. So you cut it on a 44 when you slide them in. You can see that is pretty tight. So that's how we do our inside corners. That's how we do our outside corners. And we'll explain how we splice things together in just a second. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about CA glue. I don't know if you know about this stuff or not, but I was turned on to it by a guy named Richard from Finnish Carpentry TV. Uh, this right here is like basically a super glue, cyanoacrylate, that's what the CA stands for. And this is an accelerator. And you know how when you guys use super glue and you put it on something, you gotta hold it forever and hope that it stays in the place that you put it in and not move, whatever. Well, this stuff makes this cure rock hard within about, it's been my experience, somewhere in between eight to 11 seconds. So, uh, depending on the material you're using. So. I like to use this stuff when I'm splicing two things together. If I'm in a hurry and I'm on a job and I just don't have it, I'll just put them together. But it makes for a good long piece if that's something you want to do. And then you don't have to worry about, is my corner going to be right? Is my splice going to be If I nail the corner and I nail that, am I going to be overlapped in the middle? Just if you glue them together, you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, that's just an extra. You don't have to do this. They don't sell this at Home Depot or Lowe's as far as I know. But they sell super glue. They don't, they don't sell this. You can go to Amazon and find exactly what I'm holding in my hand. So, and they got it in a little spritz bottle as well. Um, anyway, here we go, I'll show you how it works. All right, so we have our two these fine right here. Both of them on 44, remember? I'm just gonna take some super glue, or the CA glue, so to speak. Squirt it on there, nice and generously. And then I spray the accelerator here. One more thing I want to mention, this Pergo Outlast is water resistant, but to truly make it waterproof, we have to put 100% silicone on the edge. That way, in case there's a pet accident or a spill, you're covered. No liquid can travel over the edge and underneath the laminate. Now this foam rope is called backer rod or caulk saver. When you put an expansion gap on your laminate, sometimes it's a little bit too big to be filling full of caulk. So if you put this stuff in there, it takes up space so you don't have to waste as much silicone. Once you've sealed up the edges, you just slide the quarter round into the silicone and nail it off. Make sure you're nailing straight into the baseboard. 
Now this is an oil-based putty. You don't want to use this if you're going to be painting. We use something different. But this stuff is great on this paper quarter round. It makes it virtually invisible. We just take some and dab it in on the holes. Make sure your hands are clean as well. If you guys are not sure where to get this stuff, they also sell it on Amazon. It saves you some time and helps out my channel. I'll leave a link in the description. And to finish it off, we put a very small bead of caulk on the top so that we join the baseboard in with the quarter round and make it seamless. You don't want to use too much. Remember, a small bead goes a long way. Well, there you have it, guys. Installing quarter round 101. That's how I do it. Some people go through the process of coping. I think that's a little bit of an overkill. But hey, if that's your thing, go ahead and do it. I think this is a whole lot faster and it gets things done a whole lot more efficient and smoother. Plus, it looks great. Why not, right? As I said before, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And go ahead and smash that like button. If you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I try to read every comment that comes in and answer as many questions as I can. And remember, if I don't know the answer to your question, I'll get it. Once again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Until the next time, take care, stay safe. Peace.